Hello, everybody. Um, happy Wednesday. Um, welcome to week eight of online learning. And this week, I am thinking about last summer um, when I got to travel to Vietnam to study the effects of the Vietnam War. Um, so this photo here is a picture that I took. Um, there are two giant holes in the ground. Can you guess what they are from? If you guessed American bombs dropped 50 years ago that were so big, they left a hole that's still there today, then you are correct. Um, this is part of, would have been part of our study of wars. Unfortunately, we didn't get to cover the war in Vietnam, um, but I wanted to share a little bit about what I learned about last summer um, so that I hope you can um, learn about the Vietnam War at some point in the future. Um, I got to ride around wearing um riding a little motorbike wearing a cool helmet um helmets for safety folks so yeah vietnam was really cool um learning about the war was really interesting and also really intense and kind of depressing um and if you want to know more you should ask me about it this week's lesson is um about a different right specifically the right to health care in the united states um so we'll be talking about how people get health care and if healthcare should be a right. And when I'm thinking about how people get healthcare, I'm not so much talking about like how hospitals work and doctors work. Um, I'm more thinking about like how our healthcare is paid for, um, how we have the resources to take care of our own health. Um, and that's what we'll be covering. Um, as always, you have an option to choose one of three activities. Um, whichever activity you choose, make sure you do all of the steps for it though all of the steps. So activity one, there are five steps. Make sure you do all five, including the daily quiz, so I can give you credit. Activity one is learning about healthcare. Activity two is pick your own history topic to learn about. And activity three is read the news. Um, I want to give a shout out to a bunch of students who have chosen activity two over the last few weeks. Um, got some of their topics on the screen right there. And you can see it's all sorts of different things from different immigration, um, the King of England, uh, a horrible sort of race riot in Florida, the Rosewood Massacre, the history of independence of India, um, and even the history of sneakers. So if you've got something you wanna learn about, um, choose activity two and I'll get you some sources and then you can read all about it and tell me what you learned. Um, we talked about this last week, so I won't go over it too much, but just a reminder that these activities absolutely count for your semester two grade. Um, your grade can go up by as much as 20% from where it was in the middle of March um, if you do all of the assignments. Um, and if you're a little behind, catch up. I'll still give you credit for them. Um, just do your stuff. And of course, these grades still matter so that you can get credits to graduate high school and so that you can show colleges how legit and awesome you are when you apply in two years. Um, having A's makes you look good. All right, without further ado, let's get to this week's lecture, which is about healthcare in America. So be open to step three on your document. Take these three notes. The first note about healthcare says that most Americans get their health insurance through their blanks. Any guesses? Um, the correct answer is most Americans get their health insurance through their jobs. Um, so health insurance is where, just like car insurance or homeowner's insurance, you pay a certain amount of money every month, whether you use it or not. Um, and then if something bad happens, like you have a medical emergency, the insurance company pays for all of the medical emergency. It's the same with a car. I have a car insurance, I pay $50 every month. Most months I don't need it at all, um, no accidents, but if I do have an accident, then I don't have to pay, the insurance company pays for all of the stuff that happened. Um, so it's like, kind of like protection. Pay a little bit of money now to protect yourself from something bad happening in the future. Same thing with health. And most people, their health insurance gets paid for in large part by their job. So your job would pay a health insurance company, like Harvard Pilgrim, like Aetna, like Blue Cross Blue Shield. And your job pays that. Um, 
every month, maybe you have to pay some of the cost, but your job pays most of the cost. And then when you get sick, the health insurance company pays for the vast majority of whatever illness you have. You might have to pay a little bit, but not that much. Um, this system works for a lot of Americans. Um, but as you can probably guess, um, there's a problem, which is, what if you don't have a job? Um, then it's really hard to have health insurance because to pay for it out of your own pocket can be super, super expensive. You're talking 500 or $1,000 a month, potentially. Um, also, some people have jobs. These are usually part-time jobs or lower wage jobs where they don't get health insurance from their employers. So it's a real problem. It's a system that works for a lot of people, but it definitely doesn't work for everyone. We're talking 20 to 30 million Americans don't have health insurance in the United States. And as more people lose their, lose their job with the coronavirus, could be even more people. However, it's not all bad. Um, some Americans, particularly blank and blank people, get their health coverage from the government. Any guesses? It talked about this in the video a little bit. Um, some Americans, particularly elderly Americans and low income people, get their health coverage from the government. So if you are old over the age of 65, the government gives you Medicare. And Medicare basically pays for all of your health insurance needs when you're old. So you actually pay every month your entire working career into Medicare. And then when you're old, they take care of you. Um, similarly, Medicaid is the program for low income Americans. If your income is below a certain level, then um, they'll pay for you. Um, but it has to be below a certain level. And then, um, so an example of this, many of us in Massachusetts have something called Mass Health. Um, and Mass Health is very similar to Medicaid or is a part of Medicaid. However, so it's mostly for low income people. However, what's cool about Mass Health is that it also helps out a lot of middle-class people, middle-income people. Um, the state of Massachusetts goes above and beyond what most other states do, most other states do, and they give health insurance to middle-income people as well who don't get it from work or who can't afford it on their own. And this is important because in most of the country, the system of Medicare and Medicaid, it helps the people on the very bottom, but there's a bunch of low-income, middle-income people who maybe don't get insurance from their job, but they're not poor enough to qualify for Medicaid. And so they're in bad shape. Um, they, they don't have health insurance. Um, and so if they have a hospital bill, um, it can get really expensive and they have to pay for it out of pocket. So we have this system where people at the top with good jobs are okay. People at the very bottom with low incomes are okay. But there's this group sort of in the middle that can still really struggle. Um, the last note, unlike virtually every blank country in the world, healthcare is not a blank in the US. So unlike virtually every wealthy country in the world, healthcare is not a right in the United States. So think about any country in Europe, pretty much every single one, healthcare is a right, everyone gets it no matter what. You just show up at the hospital and they take care of you. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to fill out the paperwork. It's all provided by the government. So England, France, Germany, Italy, Ireland, um, all over the world. And then other countries, um, a country like Brazil, which is a huge country and is definitely not as wealthy as the United States, but Brazil has health insurance for all of its citizens. It is a right. Um, South Korea, Japan, Australia, um, a bunch of countries in the Middle East. So many countries um, have made a commitment to their citizens that healthcare is so important, you need it to survive, that we are going to provide it to everybody. The United States is not on that list. Um, and that is what this lesson is about. Um, should healthcare be a right? Should every American be provided healthcare? And part of that question is what are the costs of making healthcare a right in the United States? And what are the benefits of making healthcare right in the United States? So these are the questions that you will be answering on your daily quiz at the end of this lesson, after you do all the readings and learn about this issue of healthcare. 
Um, as always, um, I am online with Zoom classes every day. Um, hope to see you there. You can email me, leave me a comment, shoot me a text message. I am happy to answer your questions whenever they come up. Um, cool. That's it for me today. It's been great talking to you and I'll talk to you soon.